tired, me too. And uh, I will uh, go quickly through the slides and later we play some games. Okay, my name is Fan Jie from uh, Neurocat Technology. It's a local company representing the SMI eye tracking manufacturer from Germany. And now we have quite a few solutions for VR. If you know, uh, we just launched some uh, prototype for the uh, Gear VR for Samsung. Uh, but one year ago, we already launched the integration solution for Oculus DK2. So uh, today I will introduce this uh, DK2 version. Maybe next month I will bring you to the v uh, uh, Gear VR solution. Okay, sorry. So we will go quickly about the dry things. Okay, uh, why we need eye trackers and what is eye trackers and uh, how we did that. Okay, so the eye tracker that okay that why we need eye tracking uh, to solve some interaction interaction uh, methods requirements to smooth, smooth your games smooth your presentations uh, the participant can uh, integrate uh, and uh, to in interact with the content that's the purpose so that's the main purpose uh, also we can measurement we can do some measurement to measure the eye positions and eye uh, pupil diameters like that to detect attention. That's one more. And lastly, we can use some uh, so-called okay, fully aided rendering to reduce the computing uh, burden for the <coughs> mobile devices. That's the third, sorry? Okay, okay. Now better, because I'm so tired. <laughs> All right, now, uh, now my, okay, this is the three I can uh, introduce you uh, quickly about the, uh, the benefit from eye trackers. There are more possibilities for the developer and for the, from the uh, user or from uh, our talent engineer to think about the usage of these eye trackings, okay? So quickly, what's eye tracking? How we track your gaze? The very simple, okay. We need one camera with, with flash, that's all. So the flash here is a LED AR camera, uh, AR uh, light source, shed the light on your eyeballs. And then you have this so-called Pukun J point, that's the corneal ref reflection point from your eyeballs, okay? Like the green cross. So how to check whether you are, where you are looking at, we just measure the center from your pupil to the white dot, to the reflection, okay. That vector uh, has very good, unique, correlated relation with your gaze point in, the, in your uh, gaze plane, okay. So that's a simple method to track your eyes. So we have two methods. One is called dark pupil, one is called bright pupil. Bright pupil uh, method is just similar as you shoot in the daylight, uh, in the night environment, so so called the uh, red eye. Okay. So the dark one is uh, more popular use nowadays in the, uh, eye trackers. Okay. So what we did for the Oculus DK2, so we add. Each eye, each lens, six LED uh, light source to shut on your lines, uh, shut the lines on your eyeballs and get reflections. So we have six point vectors for uh, accurately detection your gains. So uh, what we did is we have one hardware feature to uh, fix on your oculus, replace your lens and integrate all the data into the USB without any additional wires, okay? So all the circuits and the hardware is integrated. So what we can offer is uh, 60 hertz binocular means two eyes uh, data, and the accuracy is 0 0.5 to one degree. What's that? Uh, consider you raise your thumb 
and you look at your dump, so the width of, of your dump is about two degrees, okay? So one quarter of your dump, that's 0 0.5 degree. So that's the accuracy uh, for this solution. We have better solution for some other stuff, okay? So uh, one very uh, critical procedure is calibration. So how we can accurately capture your gaze. So normally we uh, don't need to do that if you are okay with the tolerance. So the tolerance is about 0 0.5 to 1 degree actually. So if we need more accurate, we can do either one point calibration using one point or we can do 13 point calibration to present 13 points in your uh, screen, then it will be much accurate. Then uh, what the parameters we can provide for the developer, so bear in mind this solution is for the developer, it's for, not for the consumer. So uh, the pupil position, the interpopular uh, pupillary distance, and interocular uh, distance, eyeball center position, and also your gaze vectors for single eye or both eyes, okay? And we uh, also provide the pupil diameters. So that's all, uh, oh, and also the eye images. So that's all the parameters data we provide for the developer to use in their, in their uh, content design and in their uh, interactions. So you can use all of these parameters to give the trigger or feedback or divert your scene to different uh, storytelling like that. Okay, so that's, that's all. So I think now I can quickly set up the system and show you how it works. Maybe I'll Yeah, so I think this is a great opportunity. Well, we're actually running a little late. <laughs> so. Can you, do you want to do the demo after, uh, yeah. for everybody? And you can all have a hands-on so, sort of experience? Uh, yeah, maybe not for everyone, but uh, I can uh, demo it first later, and if you are interested, you can try it. It's over there. Yeah, okay. so thank you so much. Any, we can get some questions yeah. first, though. Any questions? Any questions on eye tracking technology? Yeah. I mean, it seems maybe an obvious question, but uh, the presence of six LEDs for each eye, would that be distracting, or might it still blow up the image quality for what you're looking at through the lens? Uh, actually, you, you mean a uh, sampling ray, right? Sorry? Sorry, again, your, your, your I mean, question you is... You have six LEDs to track the eyes yes. uh, based on the points that you can see, right? So yeah. that means that you're introducing a lot of light into the eye. So if you're looking yes. at, for example, playing in a dark environment, or experiencing a dark environment, that would get in the way of the environment. Uh, no. Actually, uh, it's not related. It's uh, uh, IR light. Ah. You cannot feel anything about okay. it. It's not the real flash. Infrared. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, do you Uh, depends on your design actually you use you, you have the gains you have the uh, so-called the fixation fixation is the time people spend on that point okay you can use it as the press button use it as the confirm use it as any anything you, you need yes you can you can give some instructions or some uh, later I, later you will try the demo you will have an idea okay Oh, uh, because the headset is already fixed on your head, right? So the mm, no difference. So we have the relative fixed uh, eye tracker cameras and your eyes. So if you turn around, but look at somewhere else, we will know because your head movement is uh, has no no business with our eye trackers. Yes, yes. 
No, no attack. How accurate is this uh, idea? Because uh, from my understanding, mm. does this technology means that you know, sensor your light and it turns it into a grayscale, scale, and then from the grayscale scale, it actually uh, tracks the, the distance between the 2D factors, is it? Uh, okay, the accuracy, they have two domains. One is spatial. Spatial is the degree, okay? We can, uh, up to one degree means how uh, accurate your gaze projected on, on the screen, right? And the other one is the time. So 60 hertz means for one second, there are 60 point. So if your eye movement is very fast, faster than this 60 hertz, then uh, definitely you, you will lose the, the accuracy. But okay, now uh, we have the latest uh, solution for VR, uh, VR, VR, that's 250 hertz, okay? It's high enough to capture everything. So uh, that's very critical for the foveated render. is using a widely other uh, domain, okay, before the virtual reality. So uh, when virtual reality comes, we thought that, okay, to bring uh, the user more natural experience is the most important. So the eye movement can be used as a very good tool to, to smooth the virtual reality experience. Yeah, so uh, actually from very beginning, from the uh, Oculus Rift 1, DK1, we already have this uh, prototype. So nowadays the, the, the uh, VR gear is more and more popular, so we have more and more solutions. I think uh, you may heard about FOB, right? F-O-B-E. That company is integrated everything, the eye trackers with the VR. That's the trend. But uh, my comment is that we already realized everything. Realize that, so uh, it will be more, uh, it will be cheaper and uh, more convenient for everyone. Is there any side effect to this? Side effect. Uh, we have the full health certificate for that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, because eye tracking uh, originally in 1960s, I think uh, at that days uh, that's quite concerned because it's. New, uh, uh, invasive matter. Now it's all so-called the dark pupil is based on the image. So the, all the uh, uh, processing is uh, non-invasive, uh, so no problem. So this, uh, actually the, 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 the power shed on your eyes is much less than the screen's light power. Okay. Uh, the, the pupils, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Yes. So actually, your uh, all your pupil size and your uh, rotation movement all will be affected in the parameters. So the some people, if you uh, uh, like short sighted, okay, uh, they also have some uh, limitations. But uh, we we have test. Uh, 25 years using this technology, so it should be no problem for for normal people. Oh, sorry, we're gonna wrap it up. We're really running late. Okay, um, so can we later. Get to it? And